The biggest reason this video needs to get out there is not because you can do this, because I think most of the people watching this channel already know this. It's because of all the idiots out there that don't know this. They think lithium batteries are clogging up refills all over the world, starting all these fines everywhere, which is completely untrue and completely fake. The thing is, if lithium batteries do eventually hit their end of life, they are worth an incredible amount of money. In fact, I'm going to tell you just how much money they're worth and it might shock you. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to have you with us. If you want to become a YouTube member, I'll put a link in the description below and you can join our other 500 YouTube members. So lithium batteries, what happens to them? right, when they die eventually. Now, to, first of all, we should point out that lithium batteries last an incredibly long time. Generally, when you buy an electric car, the batteries will outlive the life of the car based on the most recent research we have. For most good electric cars, the battery will outlive the life of the car now, today. They've just become so incredibly reliable. But what about when you want to eventually scrap it? Well, here's the thing. If you just scrap and took a big lithium battery from a car, right, would you dump it in a, a, a trash heap? Would you be that stupid? Well, if you're that stupid, I think I question whether or not you're still alive in a few years' time. Like if you're that dumb, are you the kind of person who would, you know, sort of walk off a building accidentally, just do really dumb things? You probably would, right? Because it'd be like giving away $10,000, seriously. If you simply get a lithium battery pack from a car, chop it all up, finally, chop it all up, that's called black mass. And that black mass powder is worth, well, it used to be worth when I last looked, 10,000 US dollars per ton. If your battery weighs half a ton, and some batteries weigh more than that, then that's 5,000 US dollars. You'd have to be pretty damn stupid to go and throw that in the dump. And honestly, the dump wouldn't let you because they'd want to be making money off your stupidity, wouldn't they? Imagine if you turned up at your local tip or a place where you throw things out and they'd say, what's that? Oh, lithium battery. Thank you very much, sir. You can just put that over the side here and we'll get, we'll, we'll handle that for you, sir. No charge to you today, sir. Thank you very much for that $5,000, sir. So yeah, lithium batteries don't go in the rubbish. Now, would they from say a mobile phone? Yeah, but eventually no. And the reason why is because recycling lithium has just gotten a lot, lot better. Chinese researchers have found a way to recycle nearly 100% of the lithium in a battery, even in small batteries like what I just showed you. The Independent first reported citing a study from the German academic journal that I can't pronounce that they used a special technique to extract 99.99% of the lithium, 97% of the nickel, 92% of the cobalt, and 91% of the manganese from a used battery. Now, does this mean that you can't extract a large amount of lithium, nickel, cobalt, or manganese from existing batteries, NMC batteries that have those, those metals in them? No, you can. You can extract over 90% for most of those things. But this is just getting to that point where they're saying, yeah, you can do 90, but let's get to 99. So that's what's really cool about this. And researchers actually said traditional extraction methods using amino acids cause safety issues and risk doing more environmental harm than good. Now, is that really true? No, that's propaganda from the company that are trying to promote their product, right? But the truth is that this new method is able to more efficiently extract those metals. So they used an extraction technique called neutral leaching. It replaces the chemicals of traditional recycling with a neutral solution, apparently making the process safer and more eco-friendly. Apparently also enabling to, them to extract a bit more of those metals than what they previously could. It also saves time, which is crucial. If something takes a, less amount of, a shorter amount of time, the company saves a significant amount of money on that process. Here's the thing, with lithium, nickel, cobalt, and manganese extraction from a battery, it takes only 15 minutes. The researchers used a simpler amino acid called glycine. By the way, guys, I supplement with glycine sometimes after I do a workout. I'll put a bit of glycine, literally glycine powder, I'll put it into my protein drink. Not always, but I sometimes do this. But they used that amino acid, glycine, to extract lithium more efficiently than they used a special process to avoid any further chemical reactions. As a result, the possibility of harmful byproducts is massively minimized. The study also says this process reduces recycling cost. And this was conducted by multiple Chinese universities. This is not one obscure thing. 
is happening in a number of places. It includes Central South University in Changsha, uh, no Normal University and the National Engineering Research Center of Advanced Energy Storage Materials. This, at this point, is technically a lab experiment, to be honest, but battery recycling is still an untapped resource in terms of, you know, really taking off. You know, you have Redwood in the United States and they're certainly uh, making money, but in the future, when we do have a lot of batteries to actually recycle, we just don't have that many today. That's the truth of the matter because most electric cars are still going. But when we get to the point where the world's entire car fleet is made up of all electric cars, battery recycling is going to be worth billions and billions of dollars. And what this will mean is those the price of lithium, nickel, cobalt, and manganese will go down because it will be much easier to simply recycle old batteries to get those metals. A clause in the Inflation Reduction Act in the United States qualifies batteries recycled in the US as American made, even though they're not necessarily from America, making them eligible for subsidies regardless of the country of origin. So there's a lot of batteries in, in America that are actually from China. The lithium in many cases is from Australia or Argentina, even from China as well. But when they're secondhand, they'll be technically classified as American made then they'll qualify for those subsidies. Now, that's part of the reason why the recycling industry in the United States is growing so quickly. In August, the US Department of Energy finalized a $475 million loan to battery recycling company Lycycle for a factory in upstate New York. The Department of Energy also awarded a loan of $2 billion to Redwood Materials, who was started by a former Tesla executive headed by J.B. Straubel for a plant in Nevada. And Ascend Elements secured $480 million to build a factory in Kentucky. The thing to keep in mind is we have massive batteries being built all around the world. It's not just electric cars where these batteries are going to come from. It's also these huge battery storage facilities, which after, say, 30 years, when they reach the end of their usable life, they can be fully recycled and turned into all kinds of things. New batteries for electric cars, for phones, or maybe another massive battery storage plant backed up by solar guys let me know your thoughts i think that technology like this is going to absolutely change the world and i'm, I'm all i'm all for it i'm excited are you let me know your thoughts tesla superchargers have been set on fire across numerous locations in the united states someone owning a polestar electric car was attacked by an anti-Tesla protester who thought the Polestar was actually a Tesla. If you own an electric car and someone thinks it's a Tesla, well, it looks like you could get attacked as well.